Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy, and today here on PTCGO we're taking a look at another deck for the standard format, and that is going to be Solgaleo GX, Alola Ninetales GX. And so this video in particular was actually selected by one of our patron GX members over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. So depending on how much someone decides to pledge to us on Patreon, one of the perks is they actually get to choose topics for us to do videos on. So in this case, the user Lumi Una, I believe is how you pronounce the username, I do apologize if I... <laughs> Uh, butcher that. Uh, they chose for us to do the Solgaleo deck that we actually posted about in a patron exclusive article as well uh, not too long ago. Uh, so that's what we're doing today and if you guys do want to learn more about how to support this channel and get some cool content and exclusive perks along the way definitely visit our Patreon. I will have a link down below in the description. So Solgaleo GX has been a card we've had for a while but it's never really I think had breakout success. It's you know done I think averagely well here and there but Overall, it hasn't been, you know, the best deck, but I think the deck actually got a pretty big boost from Lost Thunder, and also uh, thanks to the new Solgaleo GX promo as well. So let's dive in and uh, see how the deck is going to look maybe going forward. So Solgaleo GX, of course, is going to be our main attacker. We're playing a 4-2-4 line of this. Uh, we're playing a split between both of the different Solgaleo GXs. They're both very important for different purposes here. Uh, the primary one we're mainly going to be looking at, though, is going to be the original one all the way back in from Sun and Moon. So it's a 250 HP stage 2, 3 retreat cost, but luckily that's really not too big of a deal thanks to the ultra road ability we have here. It's a free switch. Uh, resistance to Psychic is pretty good in certain situations, and weakness to Fire uh, previously wasn't too bad, but uh, Blacephalon has been everywhere, and the Fire weakness is actually a bit of a problem for this deck just because Blacephalon is so popular. We do run a few ways to uh, potentially help deal with that a little bit and we'll get to that uh, later on throughout this video but taking a look at the attacks on this thing uh, the first one we're going to look at is actually the GX attack Soulburst GX we're just a single metal energy search your deck for up to five energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like so this is actually really nice because you know not only can we set up a bunch of energy on our field but it actually doesn't even have to be basic energy it means we can even attach things like double colorless energies or even the new super booster well I guess it's not really too new at this point but the uh Super Boost Energy Prism Star we got back from Ultra Prism, I believe it was. And uh, so yeah, we can quickly get a bunch of energy on our board, get set up. And then it has this attack, Sunsteel Strike, for two metal and a colorist is 230, and you discard all energy from this Pokemon. So you can kind of see what we're going for here. We're trying to flood our board with energy with Soul Burst, and then just take three GX knockouts, ideally, to win the game with Sunsteel Strike. So Silkway the GX has a couple of good things going for it, and... You know, even though it does have a very powerful attack and a strong GX attack, good ability, it's historically had a few things going against it. It's been very difficult to close out games, uh, you know, with this card. And also sometimes it's generally just hard to get going because you are a stage 2 deck. And that's where some of these new cards from Lost Thunder and the Promo Sogolio GX are going to come in handy to help with. So, like I said, we do have that new Promo Sogolio GX, or Sogolio GX, we're playing two of this. Uh, you know, all three attacks are actually pretty good for a number of things, or I guess all three, you know, abilities or attacks. The first of which, the ability Shining Main, your Pokemon play have no weakness. So, like I said, Blacephalon GX, very powerful card right now in the format. Shining Main can help us deal with that a little bit better. And uh, thanks to the new Ninetales, it's actually not too hard to get both Stage 2s up and running sometimes. So this will definitely help out in those matchups for sure. Uh, but then the attack turbo strike for just a double colorless energy does 120 and you attach two basic energies from your discard pile to one of your bench pokemon so previously this deck has played things like sokaleo prism star or even the old rayquaza back from guardians rising which had actually a pretty similar attack as well as this um, but this is actually, I think, a pretty good upgrade because not only can we get energy out of our discard pile, but this is actually a great attacker against non-GX Pokemon. And that's actually, uh, I think, another area where Solgaleo GX has typically struggled in the past. You know, discarding all of your energy doing 230 is really nice when you're taking two prize knockouts, but against decks like Lost March, just as an easy example, it's really going to be difficult to win against that type of deck discarding your energy every turn. So Turbo Strike is actually a fantastic attack for these types of decks. So really nice, not only against those decks, but also, like I said, to get energy back onto the field. And similarly, Prominence GX is actually a pretty good alternate GX attack we can potentially use at certain points. 
Uh, most of the time, Soul Burst is going to be the preferred one, but you know, sometimes you can actually get a quick promo Soul Golia GX up and running and bypass Soul Burst, leaving you with an alternate GX attack to potentially make use of. So we heal all damage from all of our Pokemon. So pretty nice against decks that don't take one hit knockout, especially spread decks in particular, it's really nice against as well. So it's not going to be a GX attack you're going to use all the time, but it is a nice option if nothing else. So that's going to be our Solgaleo line. Going on to the other new key component that we have gotten since Lost Thunder, like I've mentioned, is going to be Alolan Ninetales GX. A fantastic card has been seeing a ton of play ever since Lost Thunder became legal. And that's going to be for this mysterious guidance ability. Whenever you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may search your deck for up to two item cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So this is nice because turn two, we can evolve into this thing, grab Rare Candy Ultra Ball, and you know get our Solgaleo up and running using Soul Burst. And that's really been one of the big downsides of the Solgaleo deck. It's a little bit slow, and if you really miss a beat, especially in the first couple of turns, your deck can really flounder around and fall behind uh, quickly, which is a bit unfortunate. So Lil' Ninetales is fantastic. Even in the late game, uh, we can grab things like Max Potions as well to maybe ensure that our Solgaleo stay around for a bit longer. So absolutely fantastic card. And of course, that Alolan Vulpix is also a great consistency booster thanks to that beacon attack as well. So we also have Ditto Prism Star, one of my personal favorite cards from Lost Thunder. And of course, we're playing it for that ability, Almighty Evolution. So once during your turn, you can evolve Ditto into any Stage 1 Pokemon. So we can evolve, of course, into Alolan Ninetales. We can also evolve into a Cosmoem if we need to. So Ditto just giving us a little bit more flexibility in terms of you know what Pokemon we want to search out in the early portions of the game. See, so we also have, of course, two copies of Tapu with GX, of course, for Wonder Tag, but we do run, you know, double colorless energy, so Energy Drive is actually a potential option as well. And then the last Pokemon we have is going to be one copy of Delmize. So Delmize is a card all the way back from Guardians Rising. We're using it exclusively for that ability Steel Worker. Your metal Pokemon's attacks do 10 more to your opponent's active Pokemon before applying weakness and resistance. So this is actually pretty important for both of the different Solgaleos. This is going to allow the uh, one with Sunsteel Strike to hit for 240, which is a pretty important number right now in this format since we do have Decidueye GX running around in that Alolan Ninetales Zorak Decidueye deck. So this is going to help us hit that because we actually don't run any copies of Choice Band in this list. Most of the time, Sunsteel Strike is going to get the job done. 230 is a great number to be hitting for. So most of the time, uh, Delmize is going to be pr preferable to something like Choice Band. And also, it's going to allow the Promo Sogolio GX to hit for 130, which, again, another very important number that's going to allow us to knock out things like Giratinas, Tapu Kokos, uh, Baby Buzzwell, Shiny Lugias, Delmize, etc. So Delmize, very important card at hitting those crucial uh, knockouts. So uh, one thing you actually might notice about this deck too is that we don't play any copies of Swampert. That has been a very popular inclusion for a lot of these Stage 2 decks lately, specifically in the Guardi Swampert Alolan Ninetales deck. Uh, what I found was that a lot of times I really wanted three Solgaleo GX in play at a time, and a lot of times I just felt like it was hard to find the space for both you know, Swamperts, three Solgaleos, uh, Nine Tails, Lele, etc. So that's why I am opting to not include that right now, but I do think that is a card that has some promise in here as well. But like I said, I'm choosing to exclude it right now from my list just due to uh, bench space concerns. But anyways, for the rest of the deck, we have a lot of standard inclusions, specifically in our supporter counts. We have four Cynthia, three Guzma, three Lily. Of course, we also have two Professor Elms Lecture, another great new card Lost Thunder gave us. Search your deck up with three Pokemon with 60 HP or less, reveal them, put them into our hand. So, of course, this is going to be our ideal first turn supporter with this deck uh, to grab those low HP basics. That way we can get set up and start evolving as soon as possible on turn two. And the other supporter card of interest we're going to point out is one copy of Hala. So Hala is a kind of long, lost, forgotten uh, supporter. Has seen a little bit of play in some Blacephalon list, but generally speaking, it's a card you don't see too often. But actually, it is, I think, a pretty solid inclusion in this deck, just because you get to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four. But if you've used your GX attack, you get to draw seven. So ideally, with this deck, we're going for a turn two Solbers GX almost every game. So Hala is going to be fantastic for the rest of the game. It's going to give us a very powerful support to make use of at some point. Let's see, taking a look at our item cards. Again, some pretty standard inclusions for Ultra Ball, for Rare Candies, one Stretcher. Uh, there's going to be 
pretty obvious inclusions most of the time. But we're playing some other ball cards as well. Two Timer Ball in particular has been very important, I think, for this deck. So like I said, we really just have to hit turn two Soul Burst. We're a slow deck. We don't really start doing damage until turn three most of the time. So ensuring that we have what we need to find our evolutions is going to be absolutely huge. A lot of times, too, whenever you evolve into Ninetales, sometimes, you know, you have a lot of key cards in your hand you don't want to discard with Ultra Ball. So sometimes being able to search out Timer Ball is actually going to be a little bit better at ensuring you can preserve some of your resources. So Timer Ball has been a pretty fantastic card. I had originally one in the list, but after I went up to two, I really didn't look back. It's been a great card for me so far. And we also have one copy of Nest Ball. So this is going to be another target to potentially search with Alolan Ninetales GX. Uh, one thing I've noticed about Solgoyo GX in particular is that if, uh, for example, you miss the turn one Elms and you s somehow still find your way into turn two Rare Candy, uh, Solgoyo GX, sometimes you just don't have Pokemon in play to actually accelerate energy too. And so Nest Ball is just another card to help us ensure that we get our basics into play. And like I said, Alolan Ninetales can search it out as well. Uh, let's see, we have uh, two copies of Max Potion, fantastic card instead, because we're going to go for, you know, that Sunsteel Strike attack, we're going to take a big knockout, discard all of our energy, and usually our opponent won't knock us out, just because we are a pretty tanky Pokemon, so they're going to swing on us, so ideally after that we can Max Potion, all of that damage off, and then, you know, pivot into a different Pokemon, and, uh, you know, keep on attacking. Let's see, we also have one copy of Field Blower in this list, so we don't play any stadiums in here. I think Mount Coronet could be a potential inclusion, but I'm opting for Field Blower right now just because we can search it out with Alolan Ninetales. And being able to discard certain cards uh, with Field Blower is actually going to be really important, getting rid of Shrine of Punishment. Also getting rid of Choice Bands is going to be nice too because, you know, already I think some decks might have to... Uh, three shot your Solgaleos on occasion and being able to keep their choice bands off the field sometimes will force them into an additional turn to try to take a knockout on you. So really nice against those. Also decks like some Zorark Lycanroc decks that play uh, things like bodybuilding dumbbells also going to be very important against stuff like that. So Field Blower, like I said, uh, really liking the utility. It gives us a getting rid of stadiums and uh, it's a pretty searchable card, like I said, thanks to Alolan Ninetales. And let's see, I think for the rest of our trainer cards, we just have a couple of tools of our own. The first of which is going to be counter gain. So counter gain, you can only uh, use, well, I guess you can attach it whenever you want, but it really only kicks in whenever you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. And then the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to is one colorless less. So we are a bit of a slower deck, like I mentioned. So sometimes counter gain can enable some uh, you know, pretty cool plays where we can Sunsteel Strike just for two Metal Energy, or similarly, if we can Turbo Strike just for a single Metal Energy. I've actually done a lot of plays that involve uh, like a Counter Gain and a Turbo Strike with the other Solgaleo GX. So Counter Gain, like I said, it's really been a, a nice card in here. Also, like I mentioned earlier in the video as well, sometimes this deck can struggle to kind of close out games, and sometimes Counter Gain is another card that can kind of help with us, you know, scrounge together just enough energy to take I, like our last knockout to win. So counter gain, like I said, really been liking it in here as well. And then one copy of Metal Frying Pan. So this Pokemon or this Metal Pokemon, this card is attached to, takes 30 less damage, and then it also has no weakness. So this is going to be kind of a tech for Blacephalon. Uh, like I mentioned, we do have the promo Solgaleo GX, but sometimes it is kind of hard to set up both Solgaleos in the same turn. So Metal Frying Pan is going to come in handy uh, because we can search it out with a little Nine Tails. It's just easier to get into play than two Stage 2. So it's kind of our backup plan if we can't manage to get both of them into play. But even outside of Blacephalon, the card actually does have a lot of value because it effectively gives Solgaleo GX 280 HP, which is insane. So it even has value outside of that matchup. So uh, been actually enjoying this card in the list as well. And then to take a look at our energy we have here, we have nine metal, two DCEs, and then one super boost. Just to briefly recap on super boost, it provides one colorless energy, but if it's attached to a stage two, it provides a rainbow. But if you have three or more stage twos in play, it provides four rainbows at the same time. So this is another way we can, you know, alternatively scrounge together some energy to take our final GX knockout. Uh, so like I said, it's gonna help us be able to close out games a little bit easier sometimes. 
So yeah, guys, that is going to be the list we are going to be taking a look at. Really been a fun deck. Uh, like I said, I actually do think it is pretty good against a number of different decks right now in the format. But I'll quit rambling. Let's head over to the battle portion of the video, and I'll show you how this deck looks in action. Alrighty, guys, so it looks like we have ourselves a game here. We're just going to call it the Coin Flip, which we do win, which is definitely super good with this deck just because on average like i mentioned earlier in the video you normally don't really attack until like turn three or i guess do damage specifically so uh unfortunately going first is actually really important for this deck this hand unfortunately not that great we do have some supporters though so it's workable and looks like we're playing against malamar interesting and we did we did see a spell tag in their hand so if I had to guess, it's probably going to be like more of the spread Malamar type of deck rather than, you know, one of the more GX heavy ones like Ultra Necrozma or things like that. So we are going to see them start with Giratina, so that makes sense to me. So like I said, I'm kind of anticipating this is going to be a spread deck. So we're going to just Cynthia. And okay, so yeah, even though our first turn wasn't that great, our second turn is actually lined up to be pretty solid, I won't lie. So your opponent is just going to draw for turn. We are going to see an Inke hit the board. Psychic energy from our opponent, a spell tax. Those are definitely going to be a little bit annoying for us. And then just a Lily to refresh their hammer. I see a Tepakoka hit the bench. So yeah, that basically, I think between the spell tag, Giratina, uh, all that stuff just kind of ensures or, or I guess really confirms that this is going to be a spread variant. So uh, one thing I'm actually really happy about, we do play that Delmize in our deck that's actually going to be really big here just because we need it to knock out all of their attackers here. So here we do have the Professor Elms Lecture. Uh, you know, we did win it last turn, but nevertheless, I, I think it's still fine to have it this turn. Uh, it's going to allow us to get our basics into play. Going to grab, I think, two Cosmomes and a Vulpix. So we do have our Solgaleos, and we do have Delmize in the deck as well. That's actually really, really important for us. So... We could go for Ditto, I guess, if we really want to. But, nah, let's just, yeah, let's just go with these. I think that'll be good here. So we can get all of those down. And just thinking, yeah, we have the Rare Candy Soul Galeo GX, so we can actually use Soul Burst here and uh, start getting some energy on our board. Well, hmm. I actually... I actually think I may have misplayed because I'm thinking about it now. I almost think we we probably should have. Yeah, I, I think we should have just waited and used Beacon and grabbed the other Solgaleo. And next turn we attack with that. Because and the reason for that is I forgot the other one actually has a really good GX attack for this type of matchup. The other one, you know, heals all of the damage on your field, which is really big for a deck like this. And. I mean, I still think going for the Soul Burst is fine. You know, it's setting up our deck kind of as you would, you know, want it to be set up. But I'm just kind of worried if this early aggression is going to bite us in the late game. That's that's all I'm kind of concerned about now. Like, like I said, I think it's fine. But I think maybe saving our GX attack and just not evolving into the Soul Burst, Soul Glade this turn would have been... Would have been an idea. I think we definitely should have just waited and attacked the next turn because we we can't do damage this turn either way. And you know either way, next turn is when we would start doing damage. So I think maybe a suboptimal play. But nevertheless, uh, maybe I'm just overanalyzing it. Our opponent is starting to get set up here. Going to get some damage into play with that Giratina that we saw from Lost Thunder. Has the ability uh, if it's in your discard, you can put it on your bench and put two damage counters. Or I'm sorry, one damage counter on two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So just a Cynthia. And so our opponent was unfortunate enough to start with this gear team. I'm not sure if they're actually going to be able to attack with it. Um, unless they play some sort of switching card, like switch or escape rope. Uh, that would maybe allow them to switch and accelerate some energy. But I'm also not even sure how much energy they even have in the discard pile. I don't recall seeing much, if any, so far. So I think we're probably safe from being attacked this turn if I just had to guess here. Okay, yeah, and just a pass. So that actually worked out really well for us there. And we do have... I have this Nine Tails, but I want a Lily first. Okay, that's not what I want to see. But the reason that why I said that is because I didn't want to use Nine Tails, search out some of the combo pieces that we needed, and draw into duplicates of them. I wanted to try to Lily into some of the additional pieces that we needed, and then Nine Tails, uh, use Nine Tails to grab the remaining ones. Kind of backfired, but nevertheless, I think it's fine going for that play. So we... We basically need to chain Ninetales this turn. 
because we need rare candy soul Leo, and we also need field blower so it's three item cards we can't get all of that off one nine tails so here we could go for I'm a little conflicted we could go for ultra ball but we're gonna go for timer ball uh, just because that involves us not discarding anything from our hand however if we hit double tails that's actually like really terrible but you know statistically we're more likely to hit a heads as opposed to double tails so we're gonna do that and see if we can get a little lucky here uh, <laughs> and of course we do hit the du double tails just as i said Okay, yeah, we probably should have gone for Ultra Ball because we could have discarded, like, Lily and the Cosmog would have been fine. Ugh, so... Because now we have to Sunsteel Strike instead of using the promo Sogaleo. So, yeah, that definitely, I think, was another instance of us just being a little... Maybe excessively aggressive there. Probably, like I said, probably was better to use Ultra Ball. But nevertheless, we're still kind of in an okay spot. I don't mind this too much just because we can Sunseal Strike. And we have two different Cosmoems that are ready to uh, be evolved. So even if our opponent were to try to let Guzma take out one, we still have another that we could evolve into the Promo Sogaleo and uh, accelerate our energy back out the discard pile. So I think it's fine uh, where we're at right now. And here we are going to see... A mysterious treasure. Get rid of an Onyx. Oh, and actually, I just I just thought of this too. We would have needed the Delmize to um, take a knockout on this on that Giratina. So actually, it's probably not the end of the world that we that we whiff that Timer Ball just because we wouldn't have been able to take a knockout with the promo anyways. So, okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. I just realized that. So our opponent is going to Nest Ball. They did get a Necrozma GX into their hand. Okay, and they are going to get an Inke. See, Necrozma, I don't even know if they need to bench that. Just because they can't take a knockout with it. So, it would seem like kind of a waste. But here we can see our opponent is using Psychic Recharge. So, maybe they were just doing that to thin it out of the deck. Okay, yeah, that looks to be the case. And they're just going to go for a Cynthia now. So, let's see what else they are going to find. Um, you know, they're going to need an attachment for turn on this Giratina. And then they need an Art Energy in the discard. Okay, yeah, and they are going to get it in there with that Mysterious Treasure, so they definitely can attack us with Giratina if they have an additional energy in hand as well. So we're going to see Psychic Recharge, of course, starting to power up that Giratina a little bit more, but the question is, like I said, do they have an energy? Oh, okay, they have double chorus energy. That, that'll work too. Uh, so they'll be able to use that Flying Flip Attack on Coco to start spreading 20 to a bunch of things, softening up a lot of our board. Let's see, we have Max Potion, definitely a card that's going to be good in this matchup, but not one I really want to see right now. We have Super Boost Energy, we could try to get a little greedy and save it, but I think it's fine just to get it down. I'm not really too worried about fulfilling the Triple Stage 2 requirement, we have enough energy on board to stream attackers for this game. Okay, and this is actually a pretty good hand we have to work with, we can get rid of this Elm and this Cosmog, and what we can do now, we can go for Ninetales, and we can grab ourselves... Off of the ninth is we can grab a rare candy and a nest ball. So the nest ball actually is really important here because we can't knock out Coco unless we have Delmize. Coco, even though it does, even though it does only have 110 HP, it is resistant to metal, which throws off our math that we need to take a knockout on it. So this is actually really nice that we had the Solgaleo in hand. Uh, that basically enabled it to where we were able to find the remaining two combo pieces off of this nine tails. So we'll go ahead, evolve into that guy. We'll use Nest Ball, like I said, that Delmize was in deck. So we'll get that out. And we can Ultra Road here into that Solgaleo, getting some energy back into play. So even though we did with kind of the double stage two combo last turn, it actually kind of worked out here. So here we can just use Turbo Strike, taking a knockout on this Tapu Coco and getting that energy that we just discarded back onto our Sogaleo GX that we have there with the Super Boost energy. So we're actually doing kind of okay. We're at four prizes already. Our opponent, uh, even after this turn, they probably won't take a prize. They could, I guess, theoretically Guzma up something and take like a cheap one prize knockout, but I'm really not too worried about that if that is the route they decide to go with. So we see a Nest Ball here. Let's see what they're going to grab. Okay, gonna get another Coco, so probably just prioritizing keeping at least one of those in play just for that nice free retreat option that it does allow you. 
And so I really don't even feel too bad about the spot that we're in just because we have this max potion in hand. Once our opponent swings on us with the Skiratina, uh, we can throw that max potion down, heal off all that damage, and keep on attacking. So I really like the spot that we're in right now. So our opponent's going to go for Guzma. Let's see what they're doing. Going for Nine Tails, okay. I don't mind that. We have Ultra Road, of course, so we can just get out of that. And oh. Okay, Marsha, that's actually problematic because we had that max potion in hand and we did not draw it again. That's a little annoying. Ooh, and trying to punish man. Okay, so our opponent actually is having a decent little turn here, it appears. So they're going to do a pretty good amount of damage to this Nine Tails. And if we can't find max potion, this is actually really, really bad because that's basically going to be a free two prizes our opponent just kind of got out of nowhere for no reason. So trying to think what we do here we could we don't technically need the max potion this turn unless our opponent has guzma so what we could do is we could actually guzma maybe knocking out coco or knocking out a malamar and then next turn playing the cynthia to get max potion or we could just go for the cynthia try to find the max potion this turn not to get and try not to get too greedy with things So here we have Ultra Ball. Yeah, I think if we're going to go for Cynthia, we discard the Lele and we get rid of the Goose and we need to thin cards out of our deck to ensure that we can find uh, this Max Potion. So we do have both of them in the deck. We can see them there. Uh, the next course of action, like I said, is just to find them. So we'll evolve into that Cosmoem. And then just Cynthia refresh her hand to six and fingers crossed, do we find it? We do not. That is actually pretty bad. So, but like I said, we didn't even technically need the max potion this turn we really just needed it if our opponent has guzma in hand they only have a two card hand so i actually think we're probably safe on that front so here what we can do we can ultra road we can get this nine tails out of harm's way and we can take a knockout on this giratina because even if we knock out the giratina and they get it back between that and trying to punishment it's going to put a little nine tails at 190 going back into my turn so like I said, we have one more turn to find this max max potion. And here I guess we'll put this energy on this Nine Tails. It doesn't really matter too much in this particular matchup. Um, so actually maybe it would have been better just to have the energy on the damage Nine Tails in case it does get knocked out. I'd actually probably prefer the energy in the discard pile instead of in play. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, I don't think it's going to be very impactful here. So our opponent promotes that Coco, of course, because that's for your treat. And then we're just going to see a Lily. So let's see, what are they going to do? Uh, we do have that Necrozma GX we're going to have to be careful of. If they can find that in Black Raid, that would actually knock out this Nine Tails as well. So that would actually be pretty annoying too. But here it looks like they are favoring the Giratina. That's good. That is going to give us, like I said, one more turn to figure out if we can find a Max Potion for ourselves. But thing I'm worried is that no, even though we have a Lily to draw cards, our hand's actually really bad. We can't play down too many cards. We can, of course, burn the Rescue Stretcher and Timer Vault if we need to. Uh, we can evolve into the Solgaleo if we need to as well. So let's see here. They are starting to power up this gear team, but luckily for us, we did find ourselves that metal frying pan. This gear team is only going to be hitting us for 80, which is really nice uh, between the resistance and the metal frying pan. So metal frying pan kind of showing uh, some worth here right now, making sure our solos can tank a few hits. So let's see. Ugh, and we top deck lately. That's actually really, really bad. Okay. So we're in kind of an awkward spot. I really don't want to play this Rescue Stretcher, but uh, we have to. We just have to dig for this Max Potion, and it's just so crucial here. So we can get those back into the deck. We can play Timer Ball. And okay, we'll go for the Double Heads. Do we get the Soul Glare? The only reason I'm thinking about maybe getting it is because if our opponent is able to knock out the other uh, Sunsteel Strike Soul Glare with Necrozma, we actually won't have a good way to respond after that. So it's a little risky, but we're going to go for it here. Uh, and we do whiff the Max Potion, so maybe I shouldn't have evolved into that Solgaleo. Like I said, I kind of wanted it just in case of the like the off chance of a Necrozma knocking out our 
remaining Sunsteel Strike Soul Glow, that would have been really terrible for us. We wouldn't have had a way to just close out the game then and there, but at the same time we whiffed this Max Potion, and now we're actually in kind of a scary spot, I think. So yeah, we are going to go down to two prizes, but we're, our board is starting to get to a point where Black Ray GX can actually just kind of clean up our board from here. But our opponent, of course, needs to find the Necrozma to pull off something like that. But luckily this turn, I don't think we're in danger. I think we... Hmm. So if they Black Ray that... One Sugglea will take was at, um, only takes 70 because of the metal frying pan, so. Okay, yeah, we're safe for one more turn. Next turn <laughs> literally has to be the last turn we can, uh, for us to try to find these max potions. So it feels like we're kind of on a clock here at this point. In this situation, too, where I feel like... Going for that Soul Burst GX on turn 2 is really coming back to bite us because we could have used Prominence GX last turn and prevented that Ninetales from being knocked out. You know, prevented all these other Pokemon from having all of this damage done to them at this point. And, um... Yeah, so I think that turn 2 Soul Burst is really coming back to bite us hard here. That's definitely been, um... I think the worst play I've made, even though it was fine. Like, it wasn't, like, a terrible play, it just was not the best play that we had at our disposal. Uh, but I shouldn't even be talking like that. We, we have this Hala that will allow us to dig on our next turn. Uh, we have two max potions in deck, only 13 cards left in deck. So if we can find both of them, I think that actually kind of seals up the game for us to potentially win. Okay, so we are going to see this Giratina come out and smack this Sogaleo for 110. So then the Shrine of Punishment will put up to, was that 160 in between turns? So yeah, we definitely have to find two max potions here if we want to stay in this game. So yeah, 110 as I said, then the Shrine of Punishment ticks in between turns. So yeah, we definitely need to find, I think we actually need two max potions because we can afford one Pokemon to get knocked out due to Black Ray, but we can't afford for two. So we need two max potions or we run the risk of our opponent having Black Ray and just beating us. And we whiff. So we do have one max potion at the very least. Our opponent does need to find Necrozma, but oh, they gave us the, gave us a little heart emoji, so that is definitely not very reassuring. Yeah, so I feel like they have game in hand. If I just had to put money on it, their hand is like way too big, and they don't have that many cards left in deck. So if they have the Necrozma, they they just win. So. Uh, it just comes down to that. If they have it, they win. If not, we have game next turn. So, Going to do 130 to Giratina, then getting some energy into play. It doesn't really matter too much. Like I said, all just really comes down to do they have the Necrozma. If not, then we're in a good spot. So, moment of truth. What do they have? So, we're going to see this Tapu Koko get promoted. It's pretty, uh, you know, expected here. They have, what, like a 10-card hand? Yeah, there's no way they don't they don't have game or like an ultra ball or some way to find the necrozma if they don't just have it already in hand so they're not doing too much yet so maybe they don't have it i would imagine if they did they would just immediately throw it down black reyes for game so maybe they actually don't in that case we win uh well there goes that idea um so the only way we possibly win is if our opponent just doesn't realize that Black Ray wins them the game and goes for a Prismatic Burst instead. That's the only way that we actually win. So we just have to really hope our opponent doesn't see that they have that win condition to make happen because the Nine Tails will go up to 190 and the Shrine of Punishment will knock it out between turns. So we are going to see a Guzma. Bring up Delmize, doesn't matter too much, but are they going to Black Ray? And they do. So, unfortunately, guys, we do lose that win. Unfortunately, I think that, like I said, that Soul Burst GX really just came back to bite us there at the end of this match. Had we saved our GX attack for Promance GX, that could have been a very different game. So, you know, even though going for the turn two Soul Burst is normally what you want to do, and probably to a lot of people at a glance, that seems like uh, a good play. Um, I think it was actually a really bad play that kind of helped 
us lose that match. But anyways, we're going to hop into another one, see if we can try our luck again. And our opponent has a Sceptile coin and a Grass tech box. So is this Sceptile? That's what I'm wondering because, you know, your boy here loves Sceptile. I played at Roanoke uh, the other weekend. Uh, definitely go check out my tournament report for that if you want to learn about how I did there. So if I'm running someone else playing Sceptile, I don't mind that. Not only is it a pretty good matchup for this deck, but uh, makes me happy to see other people using kind of more underrated cards like that. So our opponent did Mulligan. Let's see. Ooh, and they have a Grovile. So yeah, this, this is probably going to be Sceptile. So shout out to my opponent for playing Sceptile, I guess. Uh, going to throw them the... They have a good deck. Little phrase there, whatever the hell you want to call that. Uh, and then we can... Yeah, we actually have a really good first turn, but here our opponent actually flips over Wimpod, so maybe this isn't Sceptile. Um, I mean, it's a Glycepod deck, of course, but I'm, but I'm assuming it runs Sceptile in some capacity here. Either way, I don't think it matters. I think we still are favored in this matchup either way. We're going to take one-hit knockouts on all of their GXs, and they have to two-shot us at the least. So we're going to get down this Ditto as well. We did have a couple of Cosmogs prize that could potentially come back to bite us. We do have an Ultra Ball. I'm just trying to, or not Ultra Ball, we do have a Metal Energy. Just trying to think, where do we attach this? So we could attach it to the active, and I would actually prefer that to potentially go in with the promo Soglio GX for next turn. But if our opponent has like Lele DCE, we just lose. Or not lose, but you know what I mean. We, we just get knocked out. So... Yeah, I think we're just going to attach it to the bench one. We're going to play it safe just because they have that wimp out ability. So like I said, if they had Tapper with GX, double colors energy, it could just retreat, knock us out. So here we are going to see bodybuilding dumbbells. We have this field blower in hand, so I'm not really too worried about that. And honestly, if we can find uh, both Solgaleos, we can actually do some ultra road shenanigans and get out uh, our promo Solgaleo and attack with it. But See, we have Timer Ball. Ooh, and we flipped the double head, so actually we might be able to make this happen. We can go Promo Sogaleo and the Ninetales as well. So, yeah, we can do that. We have the Ultra Ball, so that will allow us to grab the other Sogaleo to give us free retreat as well. So even though this is kind of forcing us to have an additional Stage 2 to get this thing out, I still think it was the correct thing, putting that energy on the bench, Cosmog. So here we will use little Ninetales, of course. Just grab two rare candies. That should be good, I believe. Just gonna double check, see what else we have. But yeah, we're just gonna go for the double rare candy here because we have the Ultra Ball. Yeah, so we can get out both stage twos this turn. And here you can really see, this is basically how this deck is supposed to get set up most of the time. Uh, you know, you Elm out your your you know your basics, then second turn you can use Ninetales, ensuring you can get these stage twos into play. So here we will get that other Solgaleo GX. We can go rear candy, evolve into, yeah, we need, definitely need to be careful. We want to evolve into this one. That way we can attach the energy to the other one and use Turbo Strike. And even though we have Field Blower, I kind of want to save it because if our opponent's playing one bodybuilding doubles, they're probably playing more. Ugh, okay. So yeah, that's pretty bad, unfortunately. So we play 12 energy, 12 or 13? I think it's 12. And we whiffed. So that's actually really bad for us because, yeah, that was definitely going to allow us to kind of get ahead here. And here I'm just going to play Time Brawl. Just going to thin this out of the deck, I suppose. Or we could go for Nine Tails. That's fine too. Um, sure, I guess. <laughs> I'm just debating, like, I kind of want to go for the Cosmo and evolve Ditto into it, but I'm going to Beacon this turn for sure. And if our Vulpix gets knocked out, I kind of want to keep the Ditto around to give us the flexibility of grabbing a Ninetales at some point. So just trying to think, what do we get here? Um, yeah, I guess we'll go for the Ninetales. That's fine with me. Uh, we do have Ultra Ball as well, so... And we have Beacon this turn, so we can grab some other Pokemon out of the deck if need be as well. So here we will unfortunately just have to Beacon. Big missed opportunity on our part. And so we are going to grab Lele. And I guess we'll grab... I guess we'll grab Slowly. We have a couple of rare candies in our hand if we want to. Oh wait, no, we have Ditto. So we actually can't even rare candy in Slowly. So 
That is definitely a little bit of a misplay, but we have, we have Ultra Ball, so it's really not too impactful because we can just Ultra Ball and grab Cosmoem potentially. Okay, so here our opponent does have the double Colorless Energy, so this is kind of why I wanted to keep that Ditto um, in play and not evolve it immediately. Give us the flexibility of grabbing a Ninetales if need be. So your opponent is going to go for a Lele, uh, going for a Judge. Now, the only good thing about this, we did not have a supporter in hand. We did have Lele for next turn, but um, we might even be able to find a supporter this way. So we'll have to see what this Judge is going to find this year. And, okay. Hmm. Yeah, this hand isn't the greatest, but we do have Ultra Ball, so we can always find Lele if need be. Or actually, hmm. It depends on what we draw, but what I'm actually kind of thinking of is this Goliath isn't going to be knocked out this turn, so I actually might even consider going for Guzma here, because we have Counter Gain, and we have a Metal Energy, so we can definitely attack with the Sogaleo GX if we want to. So we'll have to see what our opponent's going to do, but like I said, I'm assuming they are going to knock out this Vulpix. Really curious if they're going to opt to Cross and Cut, or if they're going to just Armor Press, but I think Armor Press is probably the correct play from them here. Just because they're really in no danger of being knocked out by anything. Because um, even if I had like a super boost energy, I don't have a way to get another like Solgaleo set up. So even if I had like super boost field blower, they they still wouldn't even be knocked out by something like that. So yeah, just going for the armor press, I think that's fine on their part. So here we just promote this guy. We have Ultra Road, so we can always switch if we need to. And we top deck a metal energy. That's actually really good. Yeah, okay, I think what we're going to do here, we're going to Ultra Ball, we can get rid of both of these Metal Energies, and then we can grab a Tapu Lele GX. And so I'm not, I'm actually not even going to play it this turn. I just want to be able to get those Metal Energies in the discard, and then we have Lele for next turn. So yeah, I think, I think this is what we do. Because then from here, we can, we can Guzma and take a knockout thanks to this counter game that we have. And here, let's go for the Oranger. Not really too worried about the Trico. So we will just use Turbo Strike here, knocking out one of our opponent's forms of draw power. So even if our opponent evolves into Grovile, I'm not too worried about that, because that's just searching out grass Pokemon. I feel like Oranger is going to be more generally useful, so definitely prefer taking that thing out. And here we find a Max Potion. It's actually a pretty good prize to get here, because assuming we get swung on, uh, we can just max pushing that damage off. Then Ultra Road into this other Solgaleo and maybe even try to take a knockout on our next turn. We'll have to see. So your opponent's going to go for an Ultra Ball. Yeah, really glad we took out that Oranguru because they would have been able to play their hand down to make use of Instruct um, had we not done that. So yeah, really happy with how that turned out. So let's see what they're going to get here. Probably just a Grovile, I would assume. Yeah, it seems good. That way they can start thinning some more Pokemon out of their deck and start getting their other evolutions into play as well. So here they're going to get down a Grass Energy on to the... Oh! And we see they have a zero card hand, so taking out a Ranguru was so clutch here. Uh, yeah, now they're literally just at a zero card hand, and they have to just be in top deck mode, just praying for a supporter, basically, at this point. So, yeah, I have to say, I feel fantastic about our spot now. Uh, now, the only thing is, we need to find a Field Blower if we want to take a knockout on this Golisopod. So right now, I'm just curious, what are they going to do? They could go for a crossing cut. I think that is reasonable, but here they are going to go for the armor press. And I'm actually fine with that. I would prefer that over crossing cut in this situation. So what we're going to do is... I think we go for the max potion because... Yeah, I like it. That way a crossing cut can't knock us out. Or I think resolute claws is the attack of the other glyce pot as well. Uh, but here we will go for a Lele. Even though we have Hollow, we actually have not used our GX attack this game. So I definitely would prefer a different supporter here. So we'll just go for the Cynthia. And we need to find an Energy and Nine Tails, or Energy and Field Blower, or Energy and Ultra Ball. We have Ultra Ball and Energy. So yeah, we got there. So what we can do here, we can Ultra Ball, we can get rid of, I think probably. I think we get rid of a Metal Energy and a DCE. I like having the option. I want to keep at least one of the Double Colorless Energies just because uh, we can slap that down on the other Solgaleo and start attacking with it at any given point if need be. So here, yeah, we'll go for our Ninetales and we can grab ourselves Field Blower. And from there, just trying to think what else do we really want. 
Um, we have field bar. We could get a max potion and just kind of like hang on to it. Or we could go for stretcher, but wait, I'm actually curious. Do we even have anything good in the discard? So we just have the Vulpix. So actually, stretcher seems pretty bad here. I'll just go for the Ultra Ball. Let's see. Yeah, that way, if we if we don't have a supporter between our two prizes and our top deck, we can always Ultra Ball for Lele. So here, we will play the Fuel Blower, getting rid of those pesky tool cards. Most importantly, that Muscle Dumbbells. Or I'm sorry, Bodybuilding Dumbbells. And here we have Metal Frying Pan as well. Let's get that thing down on the Solgaleo. Just give it some extra tanking potential here. And so, yep, we can Sunsteel Strike. Even after the Armor Press, that's basically going to put that Glyce Pot up to 230 HP effectively. Uh, so literally just enough to take a knockout here. So here off our prize, let's see what we get. Get Cosmoum and a Cynthia. Nice. So we don't even need this Ultra Ball, which is fantastic. And we have the Double Colorless Energy uh, for next turn as well to attack with the other Solgaleo. So we're doing pretty good right now, I think. So your opponent did promote this Grovile, so maybe they're going to attack us with a Sceptile GX. That looks like the route that they're going for. Okay, they are going to get down a Choice Band, going to use a Netball maybe to grab an Energy. Yep, that seems about right. <laughs> I just love how our opponent also top decked the Lily at a, at a zero card hand. Uh, but hey, I guess it at least makes for a more interesting game. So you're just trying to think, what do we do? Could play Cynthia, but what I'm actually kind of thinking about is... Yeah, what I kind of want to do here is... I feel like attacking the Sceptile with this Turbo Strike Solo isn't ideal. Like, if we're attacking with this Turbo Strike Solo, I kind of want to be taking a knockout at the same time. So what we'll do... We'll Ultra Ball for Lele, and what we can do here is we can Guzma something, one of these, like, one prize Pokemon, and take a knockout. And actually, I don't think we can knock out the Goliath Pot. I think the only one we can knock out is Feromosa, but hey, that is fine by me. So we'll grab that Guzma here. And I'm thinking our opponent does not have double colorless energy. Otherwise, I feel like they would have attacked with the other Golisopod. So that is the only thing we can't knock out. But basically, we're setting ourselves up in a situation where if our opponent promotes any GX after this knockout, then we just win. Because uh, with one more energy, Sunsteel Strike can knock out any of their GXs. Now, if they do get a, another Bodybuilding Dumbbells on Golisopod, that would be problematic. But assuming they don't, we're good to go. Here we see a Sceptile being promoted. They need to find double colorless energy to ensure that they can attack with this baby Golisopod. So they have the Cynthia. We have energy in hand, so if they don't have it, then we win. Or Grass Energy, Body Moving Dumbbells. But here they hit us with the well played. Okay, and we just get the victory screen. So, yeah, Sol Galeo there, you can see, took a pretty convincing second game. Deck pretty much got set up and got into the natural rhythm that you'd like to see with this deck there. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at Sol Galeo, even despite some of my uh, misplays over there in game one but hey that's just how it goes sometimes and also too like i mentioned at the beginning of this video if you guys are a fan of this archetype and want to learn more about it and want to maybe learn some other techs and deck building options definitely consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg our stage two patrons and higher do have access to an exclusive article i posted prior to roanoke regionals about this deck but as usual, feel free to like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel, like I said, by becoming a patron or by picking up something from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would be greatly appreciated. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.